Now, I want to give you a formal introduction because that would be terribly rude of me not to do so, but everybody, please put your hands together. Give us a very warm welcome to Edith, CEO of Solo. Okay, take it away, Edith. Uh, so I'm sorry, as Nick said, I'm Edith Levine. I'm the founder and the CEO of Solo. Um, Solo is a company who is focusing on uh, service mesh um, and projects like Cilium, STO. Uh, we're doing Envoy for a long, long, long time. So I'm not going to focus a lot about the company itself. I'm not going to focus about what I think will be the future of STO. So in general, it's really, really simple for where we are playing as a company. I think that in the beginning, you know, we're all here because Kubernetes become very, very meaningful for us. Uh, it's what in Solo we like to call Cloud Native 1.0. And what does it mean is basically, you know, we adopt microservices, we adapt Kubernetes, we were pretty excited about that. But honestly, that's also when the problem started. And to me personally, I don't think that when we adopting this amazing technology that giving us a lot, a lot of benefit and velocity, it makes a lot of sense to keep the same, for instance, legacy API gateway that running active, active Cassandra behind the scene. Or I think that when you're doing this, it makes sense to kind of like fit to the ecosystem of Kubernetes and do everything declarative and eventually consistent. Uh, so GitOps can play a big, big play here. And everything that related to observability, now you have hundred, hundred and thousands of microservices everywhere, replica of them. You don't really know even where the request is flowing. So again, how do you understand what's going on in your infrastructure? How do you making sure, because now everything is on the network, that you will trust it, right? Zero trust net, uh, uh, security, it's a big, big player here. And I think this is what most of us hear. Um, Multi-cluster, again, we have a lot of customers they are running, you know, in multi-cluster environment, multi-cloud environment, right? So basically kind of like uh, fell, fell over and so on. And I think that there is some interesting technology that we can kind of like leverage, like serverless and GraphQL that is very interesting. So what Solo is focusing on is what we call cloud native 2.0, right? Which is basically all this part above that make you successful in cloud native one. So what do we do? So we have three pillars to our platform. We have a platform called Glue, and there is three pillars to it. The first one is the Glue Gateway. Really, really nicely aligned with the Gateway market. And basically what we did, we took the STO ingress and we enhanced it by all plugins and Envoy filter to actually make it um, full-blown API gateway. So again, it's STO native, the only one that exists in the market. So we are basically taking an upstream STO and we're building the API gateway on top of it. So that's the first one. Again, very nicely aligned with gateway. The, the other one is Glue Mesh, and Glue Mesh is basically our STO distro. And besides the fact that, again, we're taking upstream STO, we're adding a lot, a lot of uh, extensibility. So if this is extensibility of ease to use, like cert rotation, for instance, if this is extensibility around multi-clusters and how do you do multi-cluster, how do you fail over, how do you route base loca a localization, right? You will start with the closed one. If it's not there, you're failing over to the other one and so on. So there's a lot of kind of like um, a enhancement that we did to the regular upstream STO. Besides the fact that we are of course making sure that all the CVs is for the, you know, N minus four and that you are successful in production. The last but not least is basically Glue Network. And Glue Network is how we believe we can take the lower level and basically enhance the service mesh. So this is stuff that related to the CNI. Specifically, we are going to drive any CNI that you have. But we are personally, if you will ask one from us, we will give you Cilium, exactly like you're doing with STO, or what we're doing with STO, upstream Cilium with enhancement, making sure that it's good in production and so on. Uh, and besides that, we're leveraging a lot of VPF to enhance it. So everything that related to layer seven, layer, you know, layer four observability, but also layer seven observability. Acceleration of your network. How can, uh, you know, we can redirect uh, traffic to when we will talk about MBN and so on. So that in the nutshell is the three pillars. Again, nicely in line for a market that you know, gateway mesh and networking, right, and CNI. Um, we have also a feature that coming on top of it called GraphQL. We basically teach Envoy how to speak GraphQL language and become the server, the GraphQL server. And it's basically coming on top of those two features. So this is great. And this is what we're doing. But we're also a big believer on instead of guess what the future is, try to create it. 
So you are, you know, all, you're all in the space of service mesh. And therefore, you know that the, the kind of like model that most of the people are using today is basically the sidecar, which means that if a request is flying, it will go to the first sidecar, it will go to the second sidecar, and it will go to the destination. So this is great. But there is some problem with this model. So the first problem that kind of like, for instance, interesting, or no problem, it's, a, it's making it harder to operate. So the first one is everything that related to operational problem. For instance, right, let's say that you want to upgrade your microservices, right? It's coming up. But what if the sidecar is not coming immediately up? And it's happening, right? You can't 100% you, you can control that. So the problem is that if your application is something like SQL, for instance, there's a good chance that it will crash, right? So a problem. So the request will go and you will lose it. The second one, an example, and I'm just putting some example that we see from our customers, right? Let's say that you want to run some job. This is great. The job is done. But guess what? Your sidecar is still there. So now it's not going to be cleaned. So theoretically, you might running a lot of kind of like sidecar that doesn't have even application attached to it in your infrastructure. A little bit of waste. In terms of performance, right? I mean, if you're going from one microservice to the other, you know, it will be faster than going through the sidecar. It is what it is, right? And the last and not least is, honestly, there's a lot of proxy out there, right? So that's pretty expensive. Okay, so a year and a half ago, so decided after working with a lot, a lot of customers to try to attack that problem. We created an internal project and we start working on how to create the future of SDO. Like eight months or so after, we discovered that Google doing the same thing internally. Um, so we decided to partner and we worked on it uh, under NDA, us and Google. And a month ago, we announced MBN. So what is MBN? and how it's making our life easier. So it's very simple. We are very, very careful. And again, there will be a very deep dive talk here, so I will go fast. But basically, we're making sure that uh, we separate between layer four, which is usually, honestly, a very simple operation, to layer seven, right? So we're putting a layer four proxy on the node. It's very simple. Right now, it's Envoy. We're working internally in the SDL community Ex external in the community, in order to make it a Rust implementation, we think we can get better performance. So basically, it's very simple. The request will go here, and it's going to be encrypted, right? And this is very, very important, right? The MTLS is more, one of the reasons that a lot of people is adopting service machine generally. Once it's encrypted, it will go to the other side, and basically, we'll go to the destination. That's not that different, besides the fact that we got rid from a lot of the, of the, of the sidecar. But if what you want is layer seven, that's where complex stuff happens. Layer four is honestly very, very simple operation, encryption, maybe some, you know, there's not going to be any problem there. <clears throat> but on layer seven, that's where we're doing stuff that are a little bit more complicated. You do not want to share that. It's not good to do it multi-tenancy. And this is why we took it out of it. We're calling it waypoint. And when the request will go, it still needs to be encrypted. But then it will go to the waypoint, we'll do whatever layer seven you want. It will go to the layer four, and then we'll go to the service. So that's very, very high level. And again, there is a talk on it, so I'm not going to put in too much. But what we did here is basically reduce the cost drastically, which is important to some people, um, <clears throat> right? By actually going to one proxy. Uh, we in Solo created a lot of blog, and one of those blog was about what it's doing to your wallet. So we see a multiply, or, you know, reducing in, in three. Um, and multiply by three, we think we can get to, to multiply by 10. So we're really excited there and we continue making it better. I'm not going to go to the performance mainly because this is like a little bit complex slide, but in the natural, we believe that it will be a faster run performance because we basically re a treat two layer four proxies relatively fast with one a layer seven proxy, which is usually where it's taking more time. So we believe it will be faster. And the most important thing is the operational. And to me, honestly, this is the most important. And I think that they will talk about, you know, a lot of the customers who today is actually adopting service mesh, they sometimes only want layer seven, but they still need to build, the, to, buy, to basically buy into this like sidecar model. And it's a little bit too expensive and too complex. It's very simple. You can apply a mesh. You can put whatever policy you want. You can remove the mesh. The application doesn't even know. And this is why they name MBN. It's really, really transparent to the application. And I think this is key. So what did we do, right? Very important, zero trust, right? I mean, we did not, we can't sabotage the security. That's really, really important. And so did that. Solo and Google did a blog on this on why we believe that it's actually better. 
but we are reducing the cost, we are simplifying the operation, and we're improving the performance. So basically everything that you need in order to make these things easier to adopt. And again, there is, a, a, I think, a talk from Google and Solo, from Lynn and Justin, um, that I think I really recommend you to, uh, to go. So, you know, we as Solo put it in our product already. So if you are interested in consuming it, this is, will be something that, that we would love to help you with. And this is what basically is Solo doing. So I will summarize by said what's special about Solo, because I think that there's something very, very unique that is overlooked. This ecosystem, we are here, you will see a lot of projects. There is a lot of open source projects out there. And eventually, as someone consuming it, it's very, very important to you to bet on the right one, the one that will win eventually. We all know that there was a big fight over orchestration, and Kubernetes won, which means that everybody else who adopt you know, Mesosphere or, you know, uh, Docker Swarm back then needed to switch all their infrastructure, which is really complex. I think what's solo really good is recognize the good ones, the one that will win. If this is a Kubernetes, we were there on the beginning, Envoy, we're working on this over six years, STO in the last five years, um, Cilium, we really, really a big believer that this is a very, very interesting technology and we would love to leverage that. And the last and not least, we didn't find any good API gateway, so we built it ourselves. Then when we recognize those projects, we are going to be becoming a leader there. And, you know, we have a lot of people here in, the, you know, in Solo that basically is running all those community and helping and making a lot of it. We are contributing to STO, to Envoy, and honestly to anything we need, right, to make our stuff successful. We have two TOC members of the five that STO has, two from Google, two from Solo, and one from IBM. And we are going to continue to pushing the boundary with MBN. But not only with MBN. If you will look at Solo, you will see that we're all about pushing the boundaries and innovation. If you will look at the work that we did with Wasm, you know, most of the stuff that people will talk today about, all this orchestration of service mesh, is something that we talked about it in 2018. We built it, we made it wrong, we fixed it. So we right now feel very, very comfortable about the solution that we have. Um, you know, MBN, we talked about it, eBPF, we are a big believer in it, and we built Bumblebee, who is the... Uh, Docker, Docker experience from running eBPF models. And the, another point which is extremely important is that we have a lot of customers. And I think this is very, very unique in our infrastructure, in our ecosystem. We see this, we run it, we see all this environment, we solve those problems so we can help anybody else. And we're all about education. So yesterday we had an event. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, book signing we build that Lynn and Christian wrote in the company and so on. So there is a lot about, about, uh, in, about um, education. I'm also going to say that it's all for free. So whoever is interested in taking whatever class they want, and we have a lot there about MBN, about everything that you basically want, Cilium, MBN, everything that Solo is doing. Um, and then you can even take a certificate if you're interested. But again, all for free, so just come and learn. And the last one, and this is kind of like on a personal note, I will finish. When I started Solo, we were a few engineers in me. So they were writing code and I was evangelist. It took me not a lot of time to understand that I need to put my ego inside and basically bring everybody to the front of the stage. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Solo is not me, Solo is not Christian, Solo is not Lynn, not Nick, not anybody. Solo is everyone working in Solo and you don't see the 200 people who are working there is A plus player, and there are a lot of them are here. So please, you know, learn from them, talk to them, and let us know how we can help. Thank you so much. <laughs>